Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another Magic Arena Explorer video. So today we are playing a little bit of Aetherworks Marvel. Um, so this is a deck that I think I played a couple of times before. Is a kind of fringe deck on the format. Um, for Explorer and Pioneer formats, you occasionally see it pop up uh, from time to time. It's never been consistently good, but um, there's an interesting new addition to it, which I think makes it worth trying again. Um, so before we talk about that, so just a reminder that Aetherworks Marvel is a... Uh, Four mana legendary artifact um, that says whenever a permanent you control is put into a graveyard, you get an energy counter. And you can tap it and pay six energy to look at the top six cards of your library. You may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So essentially, the idea behind the deck is that you're building up uh, six energy. Um, having an Aetherworks Marvel, and then spinning it up and casting one of your big threats. So our threats are Ugin the Spirit Dragon, so the very powerful 8-mana Planeswalker, uh, Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, 10-mana uh, Legendary Eldrazi, and Emrakul the Promised End, 13-mana Legendary Eldrazi. So generally when you resolve one of these, you'll probably just win the game. Um, with kind of some rare exceptions, so that's kind of the idea. And then as a kind of first supplement to that, we have our new card, which is Make Your Own Luck. Um, which is a five mana sorcery from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. It says, look at the top three cards of your library. You may exile an online card from among them. If you do, it becomes plotted. Put the rest into your hand. So essentially this does a similar kind of thing. I mean, if we spin up to this, miss one of our big threats, but hit and make your own luck, then we can cast that, dig another three cards deeper, and hopefully plot one of these uh, good cards that we can then uh, cast on the next turn. Not ideal in that it gives the opponent a turn to prepare for it, but um, there's very little you can do to prepare that much for an Ugin or an Ulamog or an Emrakul. So yeah, this just hopefully should bring a bit more consistency to the deck, provide us another way of getting our big payoff creatures and Planeswalker into play. And then the rest of the deck, so the, the lower end is just kind of energy generating cards and, and things around that. So we've got four copies of Tune with Ether, so one green that lets us search our library for a basic land. Reveal it, put it into our hand, then shuffle and get two energy. Harness Lightning, which is a removal spell, um, gives us three energy, and then we can do an amount of damage equal to the amount of energy we pay. Servant of the Conduit, which is a, uh, a, a mana-producing creature that, that gives us energy when it enters the battlefield. Um, Wood Weaver's Puzzle Knot is another two drops, so this... Uh, if you dump five mana into this two to cast it and three to activate its ability, not only do you gain six life, but you get all six energy that you need to activate the Aetherworks Marvel. And then Rogue Refiner is another energy generator, three two, that when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and get two energy. So replaces itself, holds off the ground, very, very good card. And then we've also got four copies of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, just to uh, help us uh, ramp a little bit, get to the cards we need. Um, just, you know, a very good card all round, as we all know. Um, just does a lot. And so those are our non land cards. Then in terms of our mana base, so we've uh, got a fair number of dual lands, as you'd expect. We're running fast lands as opposed to uh, any of the other um, sort of slow lands or anything like that, just because a lot of our stuff uh, is quite low in mana. And, you know, we're, we're not generally casting a lot of these top end cards. Um, so we do want to be able to reliably hit our one drops, two drops, and three drops, so they come in quite a variety of different uh, mana costs. Then Aether Hub, which provides energy and can also help smooth out our mana. Um, just cost energy to add one mana of any colour, so it's not always ideal, but um, but is sometimes necessary in the deck. And then a few basic lands to go and fetch up with a tune with Aether. Then in the sideboard, so we have some more removal spells with uh, one Rending Volley and uh, four copies of Torch the Tower. Often we will have um, kind of, uh, you know, we'll have a Puzzle Knot or a Fable Token or, or a Fable to kind of sacrifice if we do need the, to be able to bargain Torch the Tower. Um, a couple of Negates and Mystical Disputes as counter spells. Damping Sphere to turn off the opponent's... Uh, multiple mana producing lands, unlicensed terse for graveyard hate, and then some mass removal as well with Brotherhood's End. So it's a fairly simple deck in the sense of, you know, it's all it's kind of the strategy is fairly clear. It's all building up to using A the Works Marvel, um, and then just going from there. So yeah, that is the deck. Let's see how this goes. I'm not expecting great things, to be honest, but it'll be interesting to see if it can win a game, a match or two. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. I do appreciate the support, as always. And uh, yeah, let's go on to the ladder. Okay, so we're on the draw. We're missing a few of our 
energy producers here, but I think this is good enough. This could be Control, or perhaps Phoenix from our opponent. Hmm. Let's play Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot. Start building up to casting A the Works Marvel. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I think I'm fine to just pass the turn and hold up the puzzle knot here. Three steps ahead. Sure thing. Too much is at stake to just sit back and hide. Interesting they're not plotting a card here. Okay, let's... So they didn't have a counter spell they could use before on two, so I'm going to give it a go. Sadly, don't think that's going to work for us. Yep. Okay, that's fine. I'll just uh, grab a mountain. Mm, another Emrakul is not really where it's at. determined to blow up as many of my basic lands as they can, which is kind of fine. So that's three of our four out. Guess they were hoping I'd have run out of other lands at this point, so let's discard our Emrakuls. Well, tell you what, let's keep one just in case we get the chance to play it. Attack Jace. Uh, now, how should we do this? Uh, let's start with Servant of the Conduit, see what they think about that. And I don't think I'm going to run my A the Works Marvel into their counter spells at this point. Let's just build up as much energy as possible. Is this a dig through time? Looks like it will probably be a dig through time. No, deadly cover up, sure thing. What are they going to get rid of here? Emrakul, the promised end, maybe? No, they could just get rid of A the Works Marvel. That would make sense. Yep. Okay, so we're relying on make your own luck instead here. Or eventually just having enough stuff that we can hard cast an Emrakul.
Yeah, I can kind of live with that as a concept. These harness lightnings are a bit dead in our hand in this matchup. It's somewhat annoying that they can't hit planeswalkers. At the moment, so I'm just going to keep drawing land. That's not going to help much either. Uh, so let's hit Nasa and Jace. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I do have the mana. So let's cast Emrakul. Target the opponent. Now let's. Kill Narset. My mind needs a rest. Now let's take control of their turn. Um, okay, so they've got three copies of Jace here. So let's. Hmm. Let's play Edict. Each opponent sacrifices a planeswalker. Play Jace. Play Jace. Now I must step out of the shadow. Play Jace. So they get some two twos out of it, but we've emptied their hand. We still have Emrakul. We now have a target for Harness Lightning as well. We no longer have a target for Harness Lightning. So let's, yeah, let's attune with the either. Take out one of their sharks. Kill Jace with Emrakul. Ask the turn. Make a copy of that. some energies. Mm, that's interesting. Are they going to rack the board, perhaps? No. Well, isn't that interesting? So let's plot Ulamog. Attack with Emrakul. 
Play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, they don't have a removal spell for my token. So now they just die. Yep. Well, that was interesting. Okay. We took control of them there, which was definitely fun and worth doing. So, let's take out our Harness Lightnings and just put in our Counterspell package. I think that pretty much makes sense. I suppose we could put in Rending Volley, couldn't we? In the place of... One M Ulamog, maybe? Yeah, Ulamog's probably the weakest of our three options here. And we won that one without, uh... Without even needing either works model. Okay, they're going big on my old hand disruption here. Dear. Not more land, please. I don't need to kill that yet. Okay, just more land, sure thing. Yeah, that's fine. Mm. Got enough mana that I'm not hugely worried. Okay, let's have a rogue refiner in play. That's a uh, Decent, uh... And now make your own luck. Okay. Well, if I can protect that with counter magic at some point. I think we'll be going a long way to having a happy time. Do I just negate that, or do I let them have it? I could try and bait out their counter spells here. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Interesting is the word, all right. I wonder what they've done here. Have they held on to a counter spell? I mean, I'm gonna try. Right, let's. So I could play Ugin, but that's probably more likely to die, so let's just plot Emrakul and have Ugin ready for future turns. Okay. I mean, they feel super dead here. Because what I can do is I can just play that as Valky. So... 
land. Attune with the ether. Let's set up our next turn. Let's play Emrakul the Promised End. Cool. Very good. Christ, I'm on the draw again, and playing someone who's 211 in Mythic. I mean, what have I done to deserve this? Okay, let's grab ourselves a mountain. I'll just keep building up my uh, energy count here. So yeah, they are on Azorius control. So I think we know this is getting countered. Yep. Emrakul is good in the sense that eventually we will be able to do something with it. Oh, I sure keep running out fables. Okay, cool. So they're running a bit... Sh looks like they're a bit short of counter spells, so I may be able to spin up Aetherworks Marvel next turn. Uh, is it worth giving it a go? Well, I suppose we've got to try, haven't we? Yes, dig, dig. Do indeed love to see it. So, let's take control of their turn. Uh, hmm. Mm, the hand's actually quite annoying. Um, <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm just casting Farewell here and just picking enchantments or something like that. I know they don't have counter spell at least. Uh, yeah, so let's play a land. Play Farewell. Exile all enchantments. Now, they could still verdict away my Emrakul, but at least, uh... Yeah, and I'm getting the energy to activate Marvel again, so... Play Rogue Refiner. I think I'm happy to just crack some maps on it and wait. That can go in the bin. This way at least I'm digging until I know I can draw something good. I don't need another marvel, so let's just fire it up again. 
grab make your own luck. <laughs> I'll play my servants of the conduit then. And we continue. Well, I certainly know how to, um, draw my payoffs rather than hit them with my uh, good cards, so let's just keep doing what we're doing. Marvel time! Let's have the Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Uh, let's just get rid of shark and land here. Okay, they no longer have access to Emperor, which is good. A one energy. Gives us another card type for Emrakul as well. I'll hold this other servant. Just in case they have another board wipe. Nope. Okay, that was fun. We should do that more often. So, I think this is a fairly easy sideboard. I think we just sideboard exactly the same way we did against Demir Control. Hmm, we seem to be having having a good run against control. Maybe this is quite well set up for this matchup. But uh yeah, I think that will do. Because the thing is with so many of my payoffs having cast triggers, it's um even countering them, which they weren't able to do in that game, but even countering them is not so good. Ooh, double mystical dispute's quite tempting, so yeah, we'll... So yeah, I'll attune with the either because I do very much want to hit my land drops here. That's a good draw. That's quite annoying, to be honest. Emrakul's good, though. Uh... So let's just pass the turn here with our mystical disputes. Meditate and prepare. Crack the puzzle knot. That's mystical dispute, that. I don't want it hanging around, I don't like it. It's got terrible vibes. I know what must let's skip to the good part. Right, well I think I'm gonna play Rogue Refiner even though it doesn't draw me a card here. Hmm. 
Keep up the pace. Hmm, this is proving to be a problem. Main phase memory daily, which I suppose they get round of our get round our mystical dispute that way. Fable of the Mirror Breaker it is. But you know what, I will fight them over this because just get counter spells out of their hand. Okay, so we know they have We know they still have another counter spell. Okay, I think we're getting to the point now where we could scoop this one up. But as long as we have Emrakul as an option, we're not completely out of it. Let's move to game three here. Yeah, this sequencing, the, the order of plays was just bad for us there. So let's just run it back. Maybe we should have held that counter spell turn two for the Narset, but. And let the Wandering Emperor resolve. It's all quite marginal, I think. This is a decent enough hand. Tune with the either, grab an island. Try and play Rogue Refiner here. I'm glad we hit that land drop anyway. Let's have another servant. Crack a map on our rogue refiner. Uh, well, that's basically a land. Forest. At least if they verdict here, I can follow up with uh, either Marvel if I draw a land, or... Okay, let's just play Fable of the Mirror Breaker main phase. Yep, okay, that gets around Wandering Emperor at least. Are we facing down Big Tef? Is it time for Tef? No, thank you. Okay, well, I now have a lethal threat on board, so... I'm going to have to do something about this. from the world any longer. You need to take a time out. Hmm. Well, I've got to go for it, I think. Yep. Marvel. That's not it.
We need to move quickly. Gone. If I did an Emra cool there, I think we'd have won the game quite easily. But that is the game you play with the old Either Works Marvel. Let's attune with the ether. Take down Teth. Uh, no, I think I'm fine to just run and make your own luck into a counter spell here. Yep. Because I could just keep these coming for uh, for quite a while, to be honest. Play Marvel. David's veto is annoying. If it had been some other form of counter spell, that would have been preferable. Let's make our own luck here. Stop having Dovin's vetoes. Why are you like this? Trade my refiner away to keep the damage off. Okay, well, I'm one land away from being able to cast Ulamog, so. don't think I'm going to survive here, because I have been absolutely massacred by the sequencing here. Just the incredibly unlucky with Death 2 Dovin's vetoes. That is super annoying. Missing with that Marvel trigger and then them just having veto for everything. Yep. Oh, that's super annoying. Oh, well, fun couple of games, though. So yeah, that is Aether Works Marvel. Again, it's not a deck that I think is going to go very far, but it was fun to play just uh, just to see how Make Your Own Luck works. I mean, it, it helped definitely hit, hit, uh, move us towards our payoff cards more often than not. Um, 
It's a bit expensive, but it does basically draw you three cards. Yeah, an interesting one. So let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And, um, and I will see you next time.